Thank you so much. Uh, it takes me back to my university days. Um, my dad was a history lecturer and although I never studied it, um, during the time that I was at university I'd answer the phone and it would be friends of mine but wanting to speak to my dad about an extension and it was just, <laughs> again, hideously embarrassing um, as only parents can be. Um, look, thank you so much everyone for turning up today and being part of this. Uh, I have been looking forward to this almost the entire time that I've been Education Minister, um, which is only since February, because to me the idea of better, deeper uh, and more meaningful engagement by parents in students' education is absolutely crucial as one of the elements, one of the parts of the jigsaw puzzle to making our education system the best it can possibly be. We do it but I don't think we do it anywhere near enough. And uh, days like today and the, the week and the workshops and hearing from you around the tables uh, uh, later on, all of that will be uh, added in to making us better able to do this together. And I've, I've got some ambitions that I'll talk about. If I can stick to my notes, I'll try to stick to them. Um, some ambitions I'd like to see, but one of them is that we see even more parents next year, that we open it up uh, to, to, to make sure that we're making all the parents in our, in our schools feel really welcome to be part of this conversation. And I think you'll all have some really good ideas about how we can do that. Um, but I'd like to also point out, uh, before to getting into the content of, of what I'd like to say, how how important it is that we're doing this cross-sector. Um, we have, a, I think, a unique uh, approach in South Australia in comparison to the other states where we do tend to have a, a pretty peaceful and cooperative relationship into the three sectors to make a single education system and being able to grab the opportunity to do that collectively is really important. Sometimes we have to do work ourselves, sometimes we have to concentrate on the, the bits that we're each running but also at times we need to think about what's good for the state and how we can cooperate together and I think this is one of those opportunities. So I thank you uh, all for coming from the three different sectors. Now when I think about parents in education, um, and look, temporarily let's set aside the, the mantra that parents are the first educators because that's kind of obvious and we do need to support parents in doing that well. But let's think about the engagement once they hit the system, whether it's preschool or primary school or high school, at each of those stages. How do we engage at that point with parents so that their engagement is meaningful? And I think at one level, uh, we're very much looking forward for looking for parents to be kind of institutionally engaged. So we try to create lots of opportunities for parents to be on governing councils to come in and do working bees, to staff the canteen, to run the bus <laughs> in the absence of alternatives. All of that is absolutely essential and important and I think we can continue to do that better. But I think what we're looking for today is trying to reach that kind of engagement into the quality of the education experience that each child is also receiving. I cannot overstate the importance of teachers to students. That teacher-student relationship amongst all the important things in education must be the most important. And what I'd say sits right beside that is the productive and positive relationship between the parents of those students and the teacher. So that engagement that a parent can have with the teacher or the teachers on how their child is going can really make or break a kid's school year and is absolutely core. Now that of course puts a lot of pressure on the teachers. They've got 28 kids, 28 sets of parents to engage with. But parents being able to feel that that's something they can do and that that's, that's part of their job, I think is really, really important. We also have the capacity for parents in different ways, in many, many different ways, to add meaningfully another layer to the education that the children are receiving in the school. And some of that might be uh, understanding where their students, their kids, have some deficits, some uh, gaps in their knowledge, understanding, skills, experience, and the parents can help fill those gaps. It might be that parents have something special to add because of their family history. They might have had someone serve uh, in Gallipoli. And so when this, when this class is talking about Anzac, that parent could come in and, and talk about a very personal experience. But that engagement in the content of education is really important and, and I'll get to my ambition about that shortly. 
There's also the element of the child's well-being, the, the whole person that we're dealing with, not just the little brain. That it's so important that parents are given lots of room to express their concerns or their ambitions for their child on the basis of who that person is as a whole person. Parents are the ones that will spot first, most likely, any development challenges that a child is experiencing. Parents, I hope, are likely to be the first to know, and I'm particularly aiming this at primary school, I think it gets much more complex in high school, when a child is having some emotional challenges at school. And giving that parent the authority to bring that into the discussion with the teacher is really important. The teacher may not fully understand what's happening with a child in their learning if they don't understand some of those other matters that are very dear to a parent's heart. So creating that room for parental engagement there I think is extremely important. So what are my ambitions? I, um, I, I, this is terrible, someone's going to have to take this job away from me at some point because I think what's happening is that I'm becoming um, very keen on giving gratuitous advice to people basically. <laughs> so I'm given a microphone, you know, asked questions and so I like answering them and some of you may have seen that I did a little op-ed the other day in, in the advertiser about reading to your kids. So uh, please take my advice with a grain of salt, I'm just a parent. Um, and I've been an education minister for a few months. I'm, I have the benefit of enormous advice, high quality advice from my department. But my view is that there are a number of ways in which we can each help our kids learn better and that we ought to be conveying that to parent, uh, parents generally. So there's sort of generic tools about how you weave literacy and numeracy into the daily life without making your kids run screaming. I'm not always the best at that. Sometimes I get the pushback. But, you know, hey, how about we count these? Yeah, it doesn't always go well. But, um, but we can do it. There are ways of introducing some of the skills that kids need at the home that really backs up the teachers. And we can, we can teach parents that who, who don't already know. Then I think there's something around identifying ways in which we can give much more specific tools. And that's where the ambition needs some help from you guys. So how is it that we can convey to parents what their kids are expected to learn that year so that they can help with that? You know, is it, is it the newsletter at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the term? Is it some kind of portal? Are there apps? You know, what is it? But how can we make sure that what happens in the classroom and what your child is expected to learn isn't a mystery that sits behind the classroom door and then you get the, the report later on and wonder what happened and how did it happen. So how can we help open up and make more transparent what's going on in that classroom so that where parents can engage, they know that, that, that it's possible. So what I really want is to hear from you about how we can better untap, better tap, sorry, that extraordinary resource that every single family has. Now, some families will think, oh, well, you know, we didn't finish school or we didn't go to university or, you know, every family has something to offer their children, a lot more often than they appreciate. So how, help me in, in today's session work out how we can better tap that resource so that the child benefits and the family feels that education is part of their business and that they can take an interest as the child goes, goes on. So I'll thank you very, very much for being part of today. Today is by no means the end of this project and I look forward so much to hearing from you. Thank you.